Okay, welcome to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, in this question here, I'm going to be answering um, about an algebraic fraction and how to split it up from an improper fraction to a mixed number. Okay, so here, here you have a fraction which is considered improper because the numerator is of an order which is higher than the order of the denominator. So if the order of the denominator is either the same or greater than the order of the denominator, then this is considered an improper fraction. The order of the numerator is greater than or equal to the order of the denominator, it's considered an improper fraction. And the order of an expression is determined by the highest power that it has. So this has got the highest power, x to the power 4, this is considered a quartic of order 4, a polynomial of order 4, a quartic polynomial, and this is considered a quadratic polynomial because it has order, its highest power is 2, so it's order 2, it's a quadratic. So this is of a higher order than the num denominator, therefore it's an improper fraction and it will split up into a whole number part and a, mic and a proper fraction part. And I'm going to show you two different methods of answering this question. Now the first method doesn't require you really to understand anything of what I just said at all. The second method does um, in, in some sense. So basically, I'm going to first show you how to do this by algebraic long division. Now this is a method which is probably what most of you would definitely use in a question like this um, in P3. And um, you know, most of you would not use the method I'm going to show you on the other page. I'm just going to show you that because it's mentioned in the P3 book and also because it will come in useful later on in our study in P4. So it's something which will be useful for us. So it's good to get used to it now just to understand what's happening. So with algebraic long division, uh, uh, well, I say algebraic fractions, algebraic long division, algebraic long division. Okay, um, it's kind of like normal long division. For example, like for example, if I have say thirty-five divided by say fourteen, I would put fourteen on the outside and thirty-five on the inside, and then I would try to divide. Okay, that's like a grade six kind of stuff, or probably lower than that. So here you do exactly the same thing. You take the denominator and put it outside, and you put take the numerator and you put it inside. Now, but to make sure that you don't lose track of you know um, things you must always write zero in place of any term that's missing like for example here you've got x squared and then you've got the constant the x term is missing so to make sure that you don't get confused it's good to always to write plus zero x so the x is missing so put plus zero x and then minus one and the same thing for what goes inside in fact more importantly for what goes inside you're going to have two x to the power four and then the x cubed term is missing. So you put plus 0x cubed. And then you got minus 3x squared and plus x and plus 1. So it's only the x cubed missing here and only the x term missing there. And the reason for that is to keep everything in the right place when you continue. So now, just like when we do, do a long division like this, we say, okay, how many times does 14 go into 35? We say what we do is we take the first part of this. Like, for example, the x squared part. So how many times is x squared going to 2x to the power 4? Well, if you're not sure, you can just divide them. 2x to the power 4 divided by x squared leaves you with 2x squared. So it goes in 2x squared times. x squared times 2x squared gives us 2x to the power 4. And then what you do is you multiply this number that you found with all the terms on this outside. So I'm going to multiply by all three of these terms. So that's going to give me 2x to the power 4. And these should always be the same, otherwise you've made a mistake. And then 2x squared times 0x, now it, does, it gives you 0, but I'm going to write plus 0x cubed, just to keep everything in the right place. This is for x to the power 4, this is the x cubed, and the next is going to be minus 2x squared. So the reason why, the reason why we write these terms as 0 is to keep everything in line, in the right place, so that when you're doing the next step, which is subtracting, okay, like here you'd say 14 goes into 35 two times, 2 times 14 is 28, and then you would subtract. So the same thing we subtract now. So 2x to the power 4 minus 2x to the power 4 is 0. 
x to the power of zero x to the power of three minus zero over x to the power of three is zero x cubed, and you got minus three x squared minus minus, which is plus two x squared. That gives you minus x squared. That's what's left. And then you bring the next term down. In fact, here you have to bring the next two terms down because you've got two terms here. Okay, you ha you're going to end up with three terms here because you're going to now multiply what what comes next with these three terms. So bring the next two terms down. So you've got plus x and plus 1. Just like here, if we subtract these, we're going to get 7. Uh, now there's nothing to bring down. There's a remainder. Let's say it was 352. Say, say that was the answer. So say that was a question in the beginning. You would bring the next term down, and then you say, how many times does 14 go into 72? And you'd continue. So for example here, now we do the same thing. We say, how many times is x squared going to minus x squared? Well, that's minus 1 times. So you have minus 1 times x squared, which is minus x squared, minus 1 times 0x, which is minus 0x, or plus 0x, it doesn't make any difference, and then minus 1 times minus 1, which is plus 1. So the only thing you've got left is to do is uh, subtract these. That becomes 0. Now x plus 0x, or x minus 0x, it doesn't make any difference. It's going to give you x. And then 1 minus 1 is 0, so you're left with just x, your remainder. Like here, for example, you say, how many times does 72 go into 14? So you, you can think about that. That's, uh, it will probably be 4, 4 times 40 plus 16, 5, 50 plus 20. Yeah, so it's going to be 5 times. So you write 5 here, 5 times 14. That's 50 plus, yeah, that's 70. And then you've got a remainder of 2. Here you've got a remainder of x. So what would you do here? You'd say, ah, oh, that's going to be... 25 as my whole number and remainder 2 so it's 2 over 14 which gives you in the end if you simplify it's 1 over 7 or whatever 25 1 over 7 but basically that's how you deal with a long division what's left over here is the remainder and if you want to express it as a fraction you would say then it's equal to that number over your fraction so you end up with a whole number part and you end up with a proper fraction okay so here the same thing you end up with a whole number part, which is 2x squared minus 1. And you end up with the fraction, which is plus x over the original denominator, which was x squared minus 1. And there we have the answer to this question. So we had a is the term which is for x squared, which was 2. And b is the term for the x, which is 0. So it's ax squared plus bx, there's no bx here, so that's 0. c is the term for the constant here, which is minus 1. d is the coefficient of x in the numerator, which is 1, one x. And e is a constant in the numerator, which is 0. So we have now found the values of a, b, c, d, and e, and written in this form. So that's how you deal with algebraic long division um, in trying to convert a an improper fraction into a mixed number okay so it's kind of related to what you learned in grade six but it's just using algebra that's all okay so now i'm going to go on to the next uh, to the same question again but i'm going to show you in a different method which is called using identities as i said you most probably will not use this method when you are um, doing this question but it's good to know this method so let me just put that there and continue. So when you use identities, what you're basically doing is, first of all, sometimes they don't give you this. Imagine they did not give us this information here. So imagine, for example, this information was missing. Okay, so if this information here was missing, there was nothing like that there, then, and it said express this as a, as a mixed number, or something like that, then how would you use identities for for using um for using algebraic long division you don't really need to know anything else okay but for using identities you need to know something else you need to be able to do this okay in a different way so you got to understand that when you are dividing a improper fraction when you when you have an improper fraction and you want to change it into a mixed number you're going to get a whole number part which is a quotient, and you're going to get a remainder. Just like we had, for example, if we do 35 divided by, let's say, 8. We'll have a whole number part, which is 35 divided by 8 goes into 35 four times. 
Okay, so 8 times 4 is 32, and you've got a remainder of 3. Okay, 3 over 8. Okay, so this is the quotient, and this is the remainder. So just like when you're dividing this, you'll end up with a quotient and a remainder. Now, the order of the quotient, the order of the quotient will always be of an order, which is the difference between the orders of the numerator and the denominator. So this is an order 4, and this is an order 2. 4 minus 2 is 2, so it's going to be a quadratic. So we write ax squared. In fact, they put it as small letters, so I'll put small letters. Okay, so ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, you're going to get a whole number part. Plus, and then you're going to get a part which is like the remainder. Now the remainder has to be a proper fraction, and the denominator is going to be x squared minus 1. So the remainder, if it's a proper fraction, cannot be the same order as the denominator. When they are the same order, then it's not considered a proper fraction. As long as the numerator is of an order which is the same or greater than the order of the denominator, it's considered an improper fraction. And what determines the order is the uh, what, what determines the order is the highest power in the polynomial. So here the highest power is 4, so it's order 4. Here the highest power is 2, so it's order 2. So the numerator cannot be of order 2. It has to be of order 1 or less. So it's going to be of the form. And we're going to write dx plus e, because I've already used a, b, c. So I have, to use, I have to go on to d. Okay, so that's how you can work out what the form of your answer should be if they did not give it to you. Okay, they don't have to give it to you. In this question, however, they did give it to you. So that was all already given to you in the question. Okay, but I was just showing you in case they didn't know what to do. Now, what we have to do next is we have to use identities. Now, when you use identities, what basically what you're doing is you multiply both sides by what gets rid of the fractions. You're going to get rid of the fractions. So you're going to multiply by x squared minus 1, both sides of the identity. Both of these terms have to be multiplied by x squared minus 1, both sides of the equation. So here that will cancel with the x squared minus 1. So on the left-hand side, you'll be left with 2x to the power 4 minus 3x squared plus x plus 1. And that's equal to or equivalent to. Now this is going to be multiplied by x squared minus 1. So you'll have x squared minus 1 times ax squared plus bx plus c. And when you multiply this x squared minus 1 by this term here, they will cancel out. One's in the denominator, one's in the numerator. So you'll be left with plus dx plus e. So you see there's no fractions left in this whole expression or this whole identity. Now we can move on to do what we um, are supposed to do, which is basically use identity. So what we do is we're going to compare the coefficients. This is how you deal with in this method, comparing the coefficients. So I'm going to look at x to the power 4. And I'm going to see the highest pa the, the, the coefficient of x to the power 4 on the left side is 2. And on the right side, the only x to the power 4 term will come when you do x to the power of 2 times ax squared. So x squared times x, ax squared is going to give you ax to the power 4. So a will be the coefficient of x squared. So we know already what a is. a is 2. Okay, then we... The best thing to do next is to compare the co uh, constants. The highest and the lowest are, are the easiest to deal with. So the constants. On the left side, you've got 1. On the right side, you have, you got your e here, but you've also got, so you've got your e there, that's the obvious one. But you've also got minus 1 times c will give us a constant when you expand this bracket. So you've got e minus c. Now, I don't know either of those, so I can't go any further with that. So let's continue. Let's go to the x cubed terms now. On the left side, the x cubed term is missing, so there's 0x cubed. On the right side, if you com consider, the, none of these will be, of course, x cubed, so it will be when you expand this. If you consider x squared times bx, that will give me bx cubed, so b is one of the x cubed terms. And are there going to be any others? Um, we're going to have minus 1, no, there's no others. x cubed times bx will be the only x cubed term. Okay, so b is equal to 0, so that's another thing that we know. It doesn't help us with this yet. And then we could go to the x squared terms. So we look at the x squared terms. On this side, you've got a, ne a negative 3 equals here. Now, the x squared 
there's none from out here, but x squared times c, that's going to be cx squared, so there's a c, and you've got minus 1 times ax squared, which is a minus a. So now I can find what c is, because I know a is 2. So I can say minus 3 equals c minus 2, so therefore c is equal to minus 3 plus 2, which is minus 1, so c is equal to negative 1. So I'm kind of getting there. We've got d and e left. Okay, so now, of course, we can just keep going, and now we can consider, um, okay, I can find E, by the way, because I know now I know what C is. I can say 1 equals E minus minus 1, so that gives you E is equal to, that's going to be a plus 1. Take the 1 to the yeah, it's going to give you 0. E is going to be 0, <coughs> and now we've got to compare the X terms, which will help us find D. On this side, you've got 1X. On this side, the x term will be minus 1 times b. Yeah, so you have minus b, and you've got your plus d. Okay, so we know what d, b is. b is 0, so you end up with a 1 equals 0 plus d, so d is equal to 1. So now we have our values of a, b, c, and d. We can now use those to fill in what's missing. So let me just take this down there. Okay, go a bit smaller than that, I think. That's a blurry there. Okay, so now we can say that, let's get our values. You can say ax squared, so you're going to have 2x squared plus bx, that's 0, minus 1, plus dx, which is 1 times x, plus 0 over x squared minus 1. So here we have the answer exactly the same as what we got on the other page 2x squared minus 1 plus x over x squared minus 1 and here we got 2x squared minus 1 plus x over x squared minus 1 so there's two different methods of doing this of course I I would myself and I uh, would encourage you to also and um, I would guess that you would use this method in in your p3 exam or questions but it's good to understand how to do this it's a nice introduction to us when we're going to deal with what's called partial fractions which will come later on so as it's in the book i decided that i would explain it to you as well here so please um, take care that you understand it if you would like to see other questions about this particular topic of algebraic fractions in in the new p3 the old c3 you can click over here for the, uh, sorry, click over here for the topic. And when I get around to answering questions from the January 2008 C3 paper, you can click over here to find the playlist for that. And if you would like to see one of the latest papers of P3, I'll have a playlist on the card up here. And that'll be the P3. And subscribe to my channel and this icon over here. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.